we're still waiting on a few folks, um, so uh, hang tight. Sorry for the delay. Uh, I did want to share with you, I saw this on Facebook yesterday. This is a, a blessing and a prayer for uh, donning a mask. Creator God, as I prepare to go into the world, help me to see the sacramental nature of wearing this cloth. Let it be a tangible and visible way of living love for my neighbors as I love myself. Christ Jesus, since my lips will be covered, uncover my heart, that people would see my smile and the crinkles around my eyes. Since my voice may be muffled, help me to speak clearly, not only with my words, but with my actions. Holy Spirit, as the uh, elastic touches my ears, remind me to listen carefully to the caring of to all those I meet. May this simple piece of cloth be shield and banner, and may each breath that it holds be filled with your love. In your name, in that love, I pray. Amen. This comes from uh, Reverend Bott out of uh, uh, the Presbyterian Church in Canada. Let us prepare our hearts and minds as we gather for worship. I want to thank you all for coming out this morning. Uh, it's, uh, it's certainly been a, a weird and different year for us as a faith community. And um, it's, it uh, means a lot that we can make this happen. Um, and it's, uh, but we also want to be extra careful about it. Being we haven't seen each other since March, or at least a lot of each other. Um, it's easy to let our guard down, but we want to make sure we... We keep our distance, uh, that we be safe, that we keep our mask on. Because uh, as a prayer that I read, you know, we do this out of love for our neighbor. And so, um, yeah, sorry, I can't breathe with this thing on. <laughs> so, all righty. We gather here this morning in God's beautiful creation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God of the Pilgrim's Way, we give thanks for those in generations past who have been examples for us of God's love at work in the world. As we pray, we know that we are surrounded by this great rejoicing cloud of witnesses. Yet even as we name these holy ancestors, we thank God for others whose names we never knew or have forgotten, who showed us the meaning of life in Christ. For the beloved members of our congregation, Blessed Diane Knutson, Blessed Wayne Turley, Blessed Barbara Bambrick, Together, let us proclaim, we give thanks. We give thanks. For the beloved ones in our blessed lives, David Wheeland, Terry Hurd, David Rollins, Lisa Milzarek, Reed Vogel, Mary Charles, Ruth Tupel, Paul Midkiff, Brad Cawthorn, David Rollins, Ed Kulin, Polly Paget, Richard Talby, Willard Reed, Quindy Yu. Cindy Yu, sorry. Doyle Scroggins. Virginia Staley. Connie Walker. Mother of Pei Tang. Tommy Neely. Betty Neiman. Paul Sandsbury. Bob Boyd. Marion Glover. Charles Glover, Terry Sedlick, Angela Curry Maynard.
Let us pray. Holy God, we honor these, our ancestors in faith and members of our family. We too seek to do your will. Guide us. We too desire to be your servants. Strengthen us. We too long to know you clearly. Teach us. And in time, bring us to eternal home of peace and joy. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion and the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints and in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from the, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, the fifth chapter, the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This morning, our text is the all-familiar uh, Beatitudes. Uh, it comes from, uh, the, as we heard, chapter 5 of Matthew. It's, this, uh, it's the beginning of Jesus' big sermon. Uh, this is his big sermon that he's given on the mountainside. Uh, a beloved friend of mine calls this, uh, this sermon uh, the, the cate Jesus' catechism. Uh, it's a very important teaching. Uh, it's a teaching that we hear throughout the year on various Sundays and occasions. This text specifically we hear every year on All Saints. And it's an important uh, scripture. This whole sermon is, is important. Because in it, uh, Jesus is doing something unique. He's giving us a clear description of what is God's kingdom. And as God, and as Jesus, as the, in God in the flesh, he speaks a new reality, a new kingdom life, which is here now, not in some distant time and place. And his words help us to imagine that, to see God's will in our day-to-day -day activities. These first verses, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, is called the Beatitudes, because in Latin, Beatitudes means uh, bless. Each one started, blessed are, blessed are. And as we hear these blessings, they're not typically what we would associate with the word blessing. Uh, for those of you on social media, hashtag blessing usually doesn't come after uh, my grandma died, hashtag blessed. Jesus takes uh, what is familiar as what we would call pains and sorrows and other uh, hardships, and he names them blessings. He blesses those who are in such situations. Because these are 
one, the realities of our own lives that we all experience from time to time, but it's also the reality in which God's kingdom and presence comes about. Our blessings typically that we hear or think about, or at least as the world tells us, come through possessions, through power, through prestige. But here this word blessed is something different. When we dig back into the Greek, uh, it can also be translated as happy or fortunate. Again, this is very paradoxical because it doesn't make sense. Why would someone who is mourning the death of a loved one be blessed? Why is someone who is persecuted blessed? You know, usually moments of happiness is what we associate with blessedness. But Jesus in the Beatitudes reveals something different for us. He blesses those who are emptied, those who are experiencing the difficulties in this life. This blessing, as I said, is more than something in the future. This blessing is a blessing that Christ speaks here and now. Because, again, when we look at the Greek, this isn't the, the, the form of this word is present tense. Jesus is speaking a new reality into these times and all times. And as we think about that, I hope you had a chance this week to reflect on our question as we prepared and came to this day. Because we can do more than just imagine that blessing in our lives or in the lives of others as we witness to it. We experience it. We see it. We have a story to tell, a story to share of that. And so the question I'll remind you was to tell a story of an experience of being blessed as described in the Beatitudes. And while I'd love to take time to hear those stories today, uh, we, don't, we won't be doing that. But feel free on social media and other places to share those with others. But I would like to share a few of my own stories with you all. This text, uh, my senior year in seminary, uh, was a preaching text for, uh, as seniors, we get to preach one time in chapel. It's, it's the big event. Um, I intentionally sought this day because um, the year before is when our son Josiah had died. And so I felt like I had something to say. I wanted to speak to that grief and speak to um, my own experience of blessedness. And I shared in the midst of, of deep pain and deep agony, I shared what I saw as a presence of blessedness in my life. And that primarily came through other people. As people just sat and were present with me uh, in, in, in our sorrow, uh, the grace that was showed to us by the faculty and staff at the seminary, and just the ability to be with each other. Uh, Shannon and I often would go on walks at 3 o'clock in the morning because we were awake. And it was quiet. That was one example of blessedness. I can think of many more uh, in my time here at Faith Lutheran. I think of the challenging times when I've spoken a hard word of gospel that wasn't received by everybody. And, <laughs> and verse, like verse 11 really resonated and gave me comfort. Blessed are you, or verse 10, blessed are you who are persecuted, persecuted for righteousness' sake. Verse 11, blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, utter all kinds of evil against you, false on my account. Now that sounds much more harsh than what I actually experienced. But as a pastor, you know, uh, as, as uh, Joe Phillips told me when I first got here, being a pastor is like a referee. Every time you make a call, half the people are happy, half the people are not. And that's just the reality of the world we live in. 
But we have this united, this giftness of which we can wrestle with those things that we differ on. This weak point being with the election, this highly uh, distraught, highly divided time in our lives that we all have some sort of opinion towards. But where can we find that commonness, that blessedness together despite our different opinions? I also think of recent times here at faith. Verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As I've shared with you all uh, over the years, I've struggled uh, immensely with depression at various levels. Uh, this year being one of the hardest uh, bouts of it uh, that I've experienced. Uh, back in January, I, uh, I hit a pretty rough spell and then the pandemic came and then everybody was experienced some fashion of of uh, grief um, at things lost, whether it be loved ones or normal circumstances. But Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And again, I saw, experienced rather, that blessedness through all of you, through the support. Whether you knew you were supporting me or not, but just that that kindness, that loving presence that was there, that gentleness, that grace that I experienced uh, in the midst of when I felt things were crumbling down around me. I felt that blessedness in having uh, the ability and the resources to be able to seek out professional help through a counselor. I saw that blessedness through peers in the support group in which we uh, attended every month. And that blessedness came through the science in which it developed the antidepressant and the uh, anti-anxiety uh, medication that I take to help me through this. These are all gifts of the blessedness of God as we share together in the unity, as we share together in this life. These experiences, just as your own experiences, are transformal, transformational, is what I meant to say. These experiences are transformational. And that is exactly what Jesus' words did then and continue to do now. His promises, his teachings do exactly what they say and bring about a new reality, a new reality of God's will for humanity one that is freely given. But not only does it transform us individually, it transforms whole communities. As Christ's blessings go through this community, we have a sense of where God is at work in the world, in each and other's lives. And that's why we share these stories, so that we can see God's presence, God at work in our lives maybe even jogging our own memories and witnessing to God's presence in various forms of blessedness. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted, persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus enters into our lives enters into the difficult places and blesses us in these vulnerabilities 
The places where we least expect to find him is where Jesus is. The cross is a perfect example of that. By all means, Jesus should have came in riding on a steed, claiming victory and crushing Rome. But no, Jesus rode in on a donkey and was murdered because of the truth of the promise of the kingdom of heaven in which he brought. Now Christ doesn't promise to take these things away from us, brothers and sisters. We know this because we see the different difficulties and pains in the world around us. But he does promise to be present with us, to be with us in, to join us in that. Emmanuel, God with us. God is always with us, even if we don't sense God's presence. He continually enters into and transforms our lives. So as followers, as believers in Christ, as his disciples, we live in the reality of the day-to-day hurts and pains, all the while trusting in the promises that he gives us for now and in the future. We experience transformational, or we experience transformation of these promises of the Beatitudes while at the same time holding on to the fulfillment of promises that will come in that last day. As my family and I prepare to leave this call, we go transformed. We go transformed because of the many gifts and blessings in which we have experienced in this faith community, in Little Rock, in this part of the country. We go richer, experiencing God's love and compassion. We go richer being grown in our faith by your witness of your own life experiences. We go richer because we experienced some hardships and we were saw through it by God and God's presence in each and every one of you. We go trusting that God has had a similar experience in your own lives, that in our mutual ministries together, we have all been transformed as we continue along in this journey called life. So as we go, brothers and sisters, may we, with all of life's griefs, with pains and sorrows, may we be transformed in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds by Christ's promise, his promise of blessing, of living each day as promised for others, today and every day. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we enter this time of the prayers of the people, uh, there will be moments of pause that uh, you'll have opportunity. If you want to speak a prayer out loud, please feel free to do so. Speak those on your heart. Uh, God knows all, even those things that we don't know that are going on in our lives. This first section of prayers are prayers of thanksgiving. Uh, the second section of prayers will be prayers of, of intercession asking uh, f- for whatever it is that we want to communicate to God. So let us pray. Held in one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need, sharing our own petitions aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. for the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness. For the gifts of relationship with others. Thank you for your action of family the time he has done with us and we hold them so dear for what he has given us and we wish them well. 
The communion of faith in your church. God, I give you thanks for this this community, these five years that we shared together in your glory for your mission. And give thanks for the growth that we've had, for the struggles that we've wrestled with together, for the love that we shared. For what else do the people of God give thanks? Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially, we pray, for those who govern nations of the world. For the people and countries ravaged by strife or warfare. For all who work for peace and international harmony. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction. For the church of Jesus Christ in every land. For else do the people of God pray for? God, I pray that your presence be known amongst those who are affected or suffer from this virus. May they know your presence. May your healing hand be upon them. God, I also pray for those who suffer at the hands of systemic racism, that they might know your justice. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you in all we do. Direct us to fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus forgives us and calls us to new relationship with God and with each other. Let us share the peace of Christ with those gathered with us today. The peace of Christ be with you. So don't get up, just wave your pieces. <laughs> I imagine that day when you all are able to come back together, that that peace will probably last just as long as the service. And that's okay, let it. At this time, we'll be entering uh, in the time of the meal in which we share in Holy Communion. Uh, please take out uh, your prepackaged wafers and um, uh, juice if you didn't get one. Um, I think there's still some in the back. Barb can help you out. I also have some up front here, too. This meal in which we partake is a meal that is pure gift. It's pure gift because it's one that we share with saints of all time, of every time and place, past, present, and future. It's a meal that we share with our Christian brothers and sisters throughout the world. It's a meal that we share with the loved ones that have gone before us. It's a meal that we share with Jesus himself and his disciples. That night, as Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, They were together, lounging around the table, dining, sharing stories of joy and sorrows and challenges. When Jesus took the loaf and he broke it and he gave it to all of them saying, 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Their meal continued on, and as the night came to an end, Jesus took the cup. He blessed it, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is, brothers and sisters, God's gift of grace, Jesus' body and blood given for you. Amen. Let us join together in praying the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I've been given permission to walk my mouth, since I don't have a microphone. Before I give the final blessing, I do want to say again thank you and that I, I hope uh, you heard in the sermon uh, my gratitude uh, for my time here, uh, that we do indeed leave transformed uh, better and we go on in God's love and God's mission transforming uh, until that day uh, that comes when our lives end and we enter the heavenly host. We go on loving as God loves us, as you have loved us, and as we have loved you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
At this time, uh, we're going to spread out and share uh, in song. And for us to do that safely, uh, we need to spread out about 12 feet. So the distance that you see now, figure out how we can double it. Um, I don't expect you to scale the fences in the mountains, but uh, maybe if we spread kind of back towards the, the drive behind and kind of scoot to the sides, we'll stay up here in our little corner. Um, The hymn I chose for us to sing today is Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Uh, this has always been one of my favorite hymns, and I just I love the words. Especially as we look at uh, the beginning of the first and the ending of the last. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. As we depart this day, as, as our family goes on to new endeavors, and as you guys continue here as faith community. Our hearts are bound together in Christian love, despite whatever physical distance we might have from one another, whether that be the miles that we live apart or the forced uh, distance we continue to endure in this uh, time of COVID. At the end of the last verse, perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity. Again, perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity. That love of Christ surrounds us, engulfs us. That love that we share for one another, the friendship, is an eternal love and friendship. Let us sing together, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. And if you're a singing type, uh, please help me lead this. <laughs> Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the unity of heart and mind is like that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims, our want, our comforts, and our cares. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other floats the sympathizing tear. From sorrow, toil, and pain, the sin we shall be free. And perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity. Amen. Thank you. Go in peace.